Hey guys, welcome back to Hungry Geeks. I'm Ethan Dingsman, and in front of me are two laptops from Acer Philippines. This is the Acer Spin 5, and this is the Acer Swift 3. Two laptops are that are very light and portable, but caters to a different audience all throughout. So I'm going to give you a rundown of these two laptops and how it fares to my lifestyle and probably to your lifestyle. So let's check out these two laptops now. Now for your reference, both laptops have the Intel Core i7 1065G7 processor. That means it has the Intel Iris Plus graphics inside. It's not the usual Intel HD graphics that you always see from the standard processors. This is a little bit above the normal processors where it has a little bit of power and additional graphics processing. But the main difference between the two is really more of its target audience. Who is the user for an Acer Spin 5 and who is a user for the Acer Smith 3. Number two is it's already using SSD, a standard for both, not just any SSD, NVMe SSD. So it's very much faster than the usual SSDs. And it's one terabyte already. And number three is not just the usual RAM, but 16 gigabytes of RAM is activated for both of these laptops. This is more than enough for those corporate people who wants a light laptop, who wants a laptop that's portable, looks sleek. This, uh, both are made of metal, of course, but the main difference is that the Spin 5 can actually, well, spin. And the finish from both are very nice and gorgeous. Let me just give you a quick rundown on the Spin 5. It has two USB Type-C and it's Thunderbolt compatible as well. A full HDMI port, a USB 3.1 port here. It can also do fast charging and also a dedicated micro SD slot and a dedicated AC adapter. Good thing I was able to find out that this is also 65 watt power delivery adapter compatible. So you can also use a Type-C adapter if you, do, if you do have one. Of course, you have your Kensington lock, 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Next, another USB 3.1 here and also a power button. Of course, your indicator lights for processing and also your battery. And lastly is the slot for the stylus itself. On the Swift 3, we have standard USB on the right side, Kensington lock, of course the indicator lights, 3.5mm audio jack, and lastly on the left side we have a full size HDMI, USB 3.1, also fast charging, and here Thunderbolt Type-C, only one though, and your standard AC adapter for Acer. Alright, so I've been using the Spin 5 for more than a month now. I should say that the battery is around 6 hours minimum. The things I do at work is mostly Chrome, Office, um, a lot of voice and conference calls. The good thing about having like for example a touchscreen laptop is to sign off a lot of documents flawlessly. Okay, due to the stylus itself, it's also co-developed with Wacom and it charges fastly for easier touch here, touchscreen itself. Now signing off documents, especially that we are on a pandemic, that e-signature is much needed right now. I can easily just sign signatures or documents easily here from a PDF much faster as compared to opening on a phone. Number two is the portability and just simply doing tablet mode if I don't really need to go typing at all the time. I can play the conference call to the speakers and then use the webcam of course with confidence that it's not gonna echo into another feedback to the video call. Now that's a very big advantage when it comes to having a professional laptop because not only that you need to have a good overall performing laptop but it's more of the refinement of quality when it comes to the audio, to the webcam, to the overall usage scenario, how light it is, how portable it is. It just adds up a lot of confidence to your work every day. Right? And lastly, the one thing I like about this laptop is really more of having two ways to charge. You can charge using the Acer dedicated adapter or AC adapter or you can use a 65 watt PD adapter. And of course, um, just to give more highlights about the Acer Spin 5, aside from the Wacom stylus, you have a fingerprint sensor here on the touchpad itself and the speakers are co-developed with TTS audio. So 
the audio itself are powerful but not that um, bass rich. Now as you may notice on these two laptops, they're no longer the usual screen. They're utilizing a more taller 3x2 VertiView display. Now 3x2 aspect ratio is a bit weird but trust me, when you're opening a lot of applications such as Excel, Office, Word, you're going to see a lot more of items as you usually do with 16x9. And the good thing about that one is it gives you better reality state of the screen rather than trying to squeeze everything into thin bezels. As long as I have taller screen real estate and then thin bezels at the left and right, I'm good with that. Same as here, both are very good in terms of overall screen value. Aside from that, the screen from the Acer Spin 5, it's really nice, it's colorful, colors are punchy, and I should say when uh, proofing colors from the graphics team from my, uh, my work, the colors are quite, quite accurate and it tells the real color that I should look to. And even proofing for the actual items on digital to print, it's quite accurate. So. I really have to upload on this one from the Acer Spin 5. It's one of the most versatile laptops that I've been able to use recently out of all of the review laptops I did. Not because that it's it has everything. It doesn't have dedicated graphics. Um, the speakers aren't really that super fulfilling but it's worth it enough for its price point. And given that the body itself, it's more, it has that luxurious feel um, it, it's more than enough to give you a more corporate look and it's something that is just light enough or it's around 1.4 kilograms and multifunctional enough for me. Alright, so that's the Acer Spin 5. Now we go to the Acer Swift 3. So once you open the Swift 3, you'll be entered already or you will be welcomed already with the 3x2 screen. This is the touchpad. It's quite big as well. Although I'm not a huge fanatic of um, shiny keyboards or shiny body. Um, what's good about this one is everything is just clean. Um, overall, same performance, Core i7, Core i7, Intel Iris Plus graphics, and you have 16 gigabytes of RAM, one terabytes of storage. B battery usage on the Swift 3, it's actually uh, reaching more battery. I was able to use this for a whole day of work without charging so that's around good for 8 hours to 9 hours of battery life. And then when you use the Acer charger, um, it's also fast charging. I was able to fully charge the laptop in just around 1 hour and a half. That's quite fast already given that you're charging a large capacity battery. And yeah, what's good about it is, one, it's really portable. It's much lighter than the Spin 5. This is around 1.2 kilograms. It's quite light already, portable, has sufficient I.O. for me. One Type-C, uh, USB Type-C, perhaps might be um, a little bit of lacking, but it's okay. For its price point, I can attest to it. Um, I could have wished that it, they could have maintained the micro USB here. Uh, same as the Spin 5, but everything is good. Now, overall layout on the keyboard is nice. You can type easily. Travel distance is really nice. And overall, these two laptops are just simply... are They are doing the work they are purposely built for. Alright, so those are the major differences between the Spin 5 and Swift 3. Now, if you're going to ask me who are target audience for each laptop. Now, the Acer Spin 5 costs 79,990 pesos. Well, the Acer Swift 3 costs 59,990 pesos. Now, these two laptops are quite good for its price point. Why should I say that? Number one, it's already done above next level Intel Core i7 10th generation Intel Iris Plus graphics. That's the number one point. I know that there are already 11th generation Intel Core i7 laptops that are going to come out soon, but the main difference is the performance job for me isn't really that relative especially that today that you need a laptop that can complement more of your style and also portability and of course when it comes to new processors of course there's going to be additional discounts for the for the latter processor so you might um, anticipate some price drops already from the Acer Spin 5 or uh, 
Swift 3? Who knows? But um, if you're into a uh, market right now for a laptop, the Intel 10th generation Core i7, 1065G7, or Intel Iris Plus graphics is more than enough for my daily use. But if you're more into a professional that can um, have more of needs for a touchscreen portability and presentation, I should say that go for the Acer Spin 5. If the cost is a little bit too steep, now you can go with the Acer Swift 3. This laptop is again the Intel Core i7 10th generation, Intel Iris Plus graphics, 1 terabyte of SSD, and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now guys, you might prefer this if you need a laptop that's lighter. This is just 1.2 kilograms. You don't need a touchscreen, but has the complete package to give overall delivery for you. If you're more of a person that really needs to juggle with your work, needs a laptop that's light and can charge faster and last long, choose these two laptops. All right? So that's it for the rundown for the Acer Spin 5 and the Acer Swift 3. So if you have any questions about these two laptops, give me a comment down below and I'll be more than happy to cater to any of your questions as I, I, I always do on my vlog. Alright? So thank you so much guys for watching this video. I hope you learned something from this as a feature for the Acer Spin 5 and Swift 3. My name is Isan de Guzman. Make sure you've subscribed to our YouTube channel, Hungry Geeks PH. Visit our website, www.hungrygeeks.ph for more information and news about tech in the Philippines. Alright? So thank you so much guys. I hope you like this episode and see you next episode. Bye!